Okay, hello everybody. And welcome to the Transport and Place Scrutiny Panel. Um, you're very welcome, exciting to get started. Uh, so just to read that so during the meeting, all participants will be in control of their own microphone and please ensure that you turn your microphone on when you are speaking and remember to turn it off when you are finished. So first of all, we have apologies for absence. We've got apologies from Councillor Littlewoods, Councillor Smith and Councillor Douse. Any other apologies, I think? No? Okay. Um, second is for um, urgent business. We j um, we'll just note that Councillor Aidan Smith has replaced Councillor Majid Rahman on this panel um, and the front sheet will be updated to reflect this change in future meetings. So next, uh, we're going to go de declarations of interest. Um, do any members have any declarations of interest they need to raise? No, all oh, happy. Okay. Uh, so then our main item uh, is today is with the um, Councillor Avril Lacau, Cabinet Member for Climate Action, Sustainability and Transport, um, to give a verbal update um, on her portfolio, also reflecting on the last year and also looking forward to the next year. Um, but over to you, Councillor. Thank you. I just, I will just run through some of the things we have done. Um, some of the challenges um, we faced and then um, go through what we're hoping to um, achieve in the next 24 months. Um, I will start with um, the introduction of emission space charging, which was introduced in July of last year. And that was char um, charges being based on the uh, level of um, vehicles carbon dioxide um, emissions um, so that's been quite successful um, it's in place where we're monitoring that um, and clearly what's happened is where the bell it's almost like a bell curve as more and more cars become more compliant we're going to find that um, there's going to be less uh, vehicles that are being charged, the higher emissions um, tariff. But even as we go, um, we're noticing that there are fewer cars, I think partly to do with ULES, um, fewer and fewer cars that are falling within the high emissions um, levels. Um, in terms of the DLR and the rapid bus transit, we've submitted a business case to um, central government on behalf of the partnership um, of, you know, uh, co-chaired by Newham and ourselves, um, as well as CFL and um, the various partners there. Um, and the last autumn statement also, we got a confirmation of 23 million pounds um, from the government for the rapid bus transit. So we were hoping that the two would go side by side, but the uh, government um, agreed to fund the rapid bus transit whilst discussions are still ongoing um, in terms of the um, DLR itself. Um, we are, I would have to say, um, being asked to um, front a considerable amount of money, um, uh, including Newham, and both uh, authorities are concerned that we would not just be able to, to, to do that. So we're still negotiating with the mayor and um, the government to see how that goes. Um, in terms of um, parking design, um, we have Welling Way where the um, Mayor approved, um, uh, approval received um, the scheme being progressed to implementation with a TMO, um, a traffic management order, sorry, um, expected to go live end of July and enforcement will start in early August this year. Um, we introduced um, two CPZs in Charlton um, the scheme went live in January. That scheme, um, when it went live, did have some challenges. Um, we were the 
company that we'd always, we had a contract with um, for uh, maintenance of roads, went out and um, marked, uh, sort of blocked all the roads within that CPZ, um, instead of doing it incrementally as they um, put markings on the road. So that caused a little bit of an out um, pouring of concern from late, um, residents, um, understandably in terms of where would they park their car whilst this work was done. So we had to jump in and um, amend that and get that sorted out. I think the um, contractor at the time had been told that um, we need to get this done as quickly as possible, um, but that was not necessarily the best way. So subsequent to that, um, I have asked to meet with some residents in Charlton who were going through this whole process um, just to get uh, feedback on lessons learned. Um, but the uh, pre-election period has delayed that, so we're hoping um, in, in the next month or so to get some feedback from them on uh, how that was managed um, so that we can actually take some lessons from that. Um, we have uh, sustainable streets um, in the Woolwich area review um, where public engagement um, is expected to commence in August, September. Um, we've updated ward members um, or, and we will continue to update ward members um, as that progresses. Um, we have uh, also, we're introducing uh, sustainable streets in Plumstead and Thamesmead West area. Um, of, obviously, all of these are um, pending uh, public engagement um, to commence. Um, we are looking now to increase the uh, CPZs in Charlton um, and Shooters Hill area. Um, so we'll be having some consultations there um, and public engagement in those ones will begin on the, um, in January 25. Sustainable streets in Kidbrook, um, Blackheath area review, um, public engagement is due to commence March um, 25. And um, the decision for um, West and East uh, Greenwich Neighbourhood um, Management Scheme is um, pending the call-in, which will be on the 31st of um, this month. And so I can't um, preempt what's going to happen there, so we will take that from there. But, you know, that's um, on hold uh, as, as it was. Now, in terms of um, the cycle network development, um, work is underway with TfL to develop the following cycle routes, um, and that's the Greenwich Town Centre interim connection. Um, we've been um, having discussions with the ward councillors there, um, and we're engaging with the um, residents in that area. Um, we will be um, looking to extend the Woolwich to Greenwich um, cycle path, Shooters Hill to Greenwich, and Woolwich to Thamesmead. And um, technical work is underway on all schemes and consultation is expected from uh, the autumn. Um, in Plumstead and Abbey Wood cycle routes, following further data collection and stakeholder feedback, an enhanced scheme um, will be brought forward as part of our moving traffic car um, convention, contravention program. Um, procurement is completed for a new provider for a significant expansion of cycle hangars um, this summer and autumn. And we've already started um, consulting um, or having conversations with ward councillors about where they feel that those cycle hangars are best placed to be positioned with also comments from us about where we think um, there's a, a potential um, for, for those cycle hangars. Um, so we hope to have a, a substantial um, increase in cycle hangers um, uh, shortly. Um, 
proposals for EV charging. Um, we have um, proposed an innovative licensing approach um, to create a step change in EV charging um, provision and agreed providers are going to be invited to apply in July. Um, so that process is in place as we speak. Um, and awards to providers anticipated for autumn um, subject to uh, successful um, procurement. Um, we would expect to see an increase in EV charging um, to the tune of something like um, 200 a year um, increase. The reason we went for this licensing program is um, because obviously for us it, it costs, it doesn't cost the council, but we were also mindful that um, in licensing, there's a tendency or the, the, they could be the temptation for providers to want to um, put EV charging in those places that are most lucrative. So part and parcel of the licensing agreement would be that they need to um, put EV charging in um, certain areas that perhaps are more disadvantaged and um, to try and balance that out a bit. Um, dimming of street lights is now fully completed. Um, LED street, LED street lighting um, is upgraded, um, has been upgraded and uh, that's fully done. Um, bollards and other street for, um, furniture that we have that um, I am sure uh, Councillor Gardner will um, be telling me he's, we've had a walkabout where we have some um, street lights that have been sort of cut in half and they're cluttering the um, streets. Um, so we're going through a program of removing those um, to declutter the, um, the, 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 the streets. Um, in terms of dockless bikes, we're working, continue to work closely with providers and have prepared a decision on the Royal Boroughs approach continued and continuing engagement in the London-wide work um, on the subject uh, to take and that subject to a decision soon. So um, rather than doing it borough by borough, um, through tech, um, the Transport and um, Committee uh, in um, London boroughs, um, we thought it's much better to, have to take a London-wide approach because where we were seeing, I mean, before Greenwich had even um, engaged in discussions with any, we were already seeing quite a lot of um, uh, uh, dockless bikes being left in our streets and um, littering, particularly if you go to some of the bordering areas with Woolwich, um, Lewisham. So we have opted to the London-wide approach on that. 20 mile an hour roads, um, the feasibility, design and consultation um, of two locations have commenced in Horn Park and Cedarhurst um, Drive area. And this comes on top of two uh, 20 mile an hour areas delivered in 22-23, which is in Sparrows Lane and um, Greenhaven Drive in Thamesmead. Um, two schemes were delivered in 23-24 and will be delivered um, in the uh, financial, current financial year. In addition, we um, anticipate to um, deliver Prince Rupert Road, Pear Tree Way areas um, to complement the changes that um, TFL have put to their own roads because um, not all of these roads are ours. And um, I think sometimes we have problems where the TFL roads um, go to 20 miles an hour um, and such as here where you turn in to Wellington High Street and it's a 30 mile an hour road. So we're trying to rationalize how these roads are operating um, together. Um, highways contract was a problem. Um, we deferred that. Um, it came to overview and scrutiny um, and the procurement took quite a while. Um, we have um, now got that contract. Um, we're no longer using the contractors that we were using before. Um, and so far the um, results have been quite positive 
um, with the work that this new contractors are, are doing. So we're quite happy with that um, as things stand. 11 um, school streets program. Um, we have seven, uh, currently seven temporary school streets um, and four permanent. Um, and all those seven temporary ones will be made permanent with APR um, enforcement using 24 new cameras. Um, school streets program is one that we are hoping to roll out quite um, aggressively over the next couple of years. So we will be looking to, 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 to do quite a few more. Um, in local safety schemes, we have delivered 10 major and minor local safety schemes in 22-23 and a further nine in 23-24. We're programmed to deliver um, a further 10 major and minor schemes in 24-25. Greenwich Town Centre, Livable Neighbourhood um, Outline Design. Um, the project to remove vehicles, um, that gyratory which is dominated by vehicles to improve walking and cycling is an ongoing project. Um, we're working with TfL, ward councillors, um, and traffic modelling is now underway. Um, and um, an approach is being agreed with TfL to address um, some of the technical issues that we need to deal with. Um, and then we move on to um, Plumstead um, and the gyratory around Plumstead, where we got some funding from the uh, development um, on Petman Crescent um, by, um, is it Barrett? I can't remember the, the developer, um, that's not my area, but we did get funding. Barclay Homes, yes. I was about to say Barrett. <laughs> Barclay Homes and Peabody. Um, and so that work needs to be completed by October this year. Um, the, they've done all the uh, consultation. It's been quite a long process. Um, and it's really going to be um, transformative in, in, in the way that that area is. And it's kind of working side by side with the um, cycle routes that TfL um, are anticipating to be working on coming up um, through Cycleway 4 as well. So we should see that um, coming to fruition by the end of this year. In terms of 24-25, um, or let's say the next 24 months, um, we would have accelerated the um, EV providers um, to 2,000, as I said, per annum. Um, we're hoping to consult and deliver Eltham and Greenwich cycleways, so all the cycleways that have, um, will be delivered in this period we're, we're expecting. Um, we will be making a permanent an additional 10 um, school streets with uh, ANPR, um, and no, we are delivering 10, and we will be delivering another 20 in the next um, two years. Um, we're hoping to implement healthy, sustainable streets, which will include CPZs, um, and includes um, considering um, some of the areas that I mentioned earlier. Um, we, in terms of um, flooding, also runs, sits under us. So um, we are delivering a sustainable drainage um, project um, borough-wide to provide flood alleviation and deliver um, a one million pound um, project to develop a flood neutral um, flood management scheme. Um, which should um, alleviate um, the network throughout through a nature-based approach. Um, so we're hoping we were lucky to get uh, the largest amount of funding um, for that. So that's external funding. Um, we are developing a highways asset management plan and flood, flood risk strategy, 
which should be coming out soon. Um, and yeah, those are, those are the main areas. Of course, we have some smaller projects that we, we will be doing. Um, and um, I can see my colleague, um, eyebrows um, raised because we will be doing some um, this year some traffic calming measures in West Hallows. Um, it's uh, programmed for this year. That's it so far um, and I am happy to take questions. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, we'll open it to the panel. So um, Matt, then David, if you want to go. Um, I've got a few. Shall I ask a couple and then uh, let others ask and then come back if there's time? Yeah, great, thank you. Um, you've anticipated my first question. Thank you for the um, update, uh, Councillor Zakar. I, I was going to ask, well, for, the first question is just more broadly about the transport prioritisation research that was planned to be published earlier in the year. Could you just give us an update on when that will be published. That was the work looking at all the roads across the borough. Yeah, it's, it has actually been completed. Um, I um, also invited um, a, a, another member to um, throw their eyes on it with um, comments. Um, so that's completed. So, you know, I expect that to be published imminently. Okay, that's great. And it, when it's published, Will that prioritisation tell residents in areas where there are traffic problems when their area will be programmed for an intervention? So, for example, West Hallows, Larchwood, two examples in my um, I think after the um, mistake that was made um, by um, publishing uh, the stages that we were hoping to um, operate which ended up being wrong. Um, so you had a published document um, that, you know, on discussion, and certainly with having had discussions with you and your fellow ward councillors, um, I, I was very clear at the time that um, it didn't seem um, right that um, the CPZ, um, your, your area would be um, seen as stage two of that CPZ. So. Um, In my view, that is an area that would have not been in the first, it would have come in the last stage, if, uh, if any. Um, so I'm, I'm now very cautious about what's published. And also, um, in terms of um, whether or not we are able to um, do the work that um, we're doing. So what I will publish is as and when we are um, doing um, work. Okay, thank you. So it's, that it's, it's not um, used for um, other, other purposes. I, I, I think it's just reasonable that rather than having residents um, panicking about something that's uh, not happening in the foreseeable future. Um, it's, the, it's the as and when that is causing difficulty. Um, so, you know, we've got West Hallows that you've mentioned, Larchwood Road, two examples, extreme examples of very severe difficulty that you've seen for yourself because you came and visited with us, all on roads all along the A20. Greenwich, uh, East and West Greenwich scheme has been prioritised. Um, residents have been told that the transport prioritisation programme will inform what happens when, but nobody has any timetable, any notion of when that will be. And, uh, I don't think it's tenable to just let it drift. And you, you mentioned West Hallows, and you said it's been programmed for 24, 25. And we, we've met several times about it, obviously, as you know. Um, but uh, you said that traffic calming. Traffic calming has already taken place and hasn't worked. This is a, kind of a, a different solution. Well, I don't want to give it a, a, a label. We will sit down with you and um, have a discussion about what we are looking to do in the area so I'm not looking to go into the specifics of a particular scheme but it's more that uh, you know I wanted to raise it and I, I met with West Hallows residents today and you know they weren't satisfied with what they heard in all honesty at full council at all 
and they uh, are organizing a public meeting that they've asked me to mention they'll be inviting you to. And it's because, you know, it's been two years and there's, there is this sense of drift. And I think on, the, on that example, but also on the more general point, where we've got areas of severe traffic problems, um, we need to be able to, as a council, uh, the council needs to be able to give <laughs> residents a broad sense of when that area will be examined, reviewed, uh, and, and action taken. Because at the moment, the council is managing to disappoint and frankly infuriate everybody everywhere. And so I'd really urge you to, uh, could I just urge you to, to, have, to think about how a, a broad timetable could be published? The reason um, East and West Greenwich was prioritised uh, was simply because we had um, given an undertaking um, when the uh, last scheme was um, stopped to come back to it as soon as possible um, and therefore we needed to um, do just that. Um, obviously I hadn't anticipated that um, matters would take the length of time they have. Um, we were of the view that we would have been a lot further down the road um, on a, a, a number of schemes than we have been. Um, so this prioritization will give an idea of what will determine what becomes a priority. Just one last follow-up on this topic. Thank you. Um, and so that is going to be published imminently, I think you said. Yeah. Um, so when that's shared with residents, that won't have any timings attached. That will, will, just, will that say, for example, this area we are deeming, the council is deeming, is priority one to 10 or however it's structured. People will be able to get a sense, will they, from that document of, of the order of interventions that are going to be executed. I think what it will say is that um, these are the things that we will use to uh, measure what creates the priority so that when we are intervening in an area, you will understand these are the criteria. Um, so that's what will be very clear. Um, so there's no confusion about so it, how it we will, prioritize. It will be the criteria that's being published, not the actual priority list. The list is not necessarily what's going. I mean, I've, I've, I'm, 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 as I've said to you, pop and plain, I'm really reluctant to put a list because Number one, we cannot always, given the kind of pressures that we've had, if I'd given a list um, two years ago, I would have expected to have got a lot further than I have got to, to date. So I don't want people thinking, you know, in 2025, I'm doing something that I'm not sure I'll do. But what people will know is what are the areas that, you know, does this area um, fall under this category? Does it fall under that category? Is there, um, a, 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 you know, what's the transport network? What's the, um, what are the issues in that area? So if it falls under those areas, this is how we will prioritize. That's what it'll tell you. Okay, I'll, I'll let others ask questions, but obviously we'll talk about West Hallows and Larchwood Road specifically, and having chased you up recently about it, but thank you for the answers. Um, You've submitted a petition on West Hallows. You've asked questions on West, you've asked me directly questions on West Hallows, which I'm responding to um, in the same manner that the question was asked. So um, unless you want me to deal with the casework here, um, no, I was, I was thanking you for your answers and saying that obviously we're speaking on an ongoing basis. Yeah, You're yeah, speaking yeah, with the, yeah, all three yeah. ward councillors, with Cathy, yeah, Roger yeah, and I. Yeah, yeah. yeah, That's all I meant. Okay. I, okay. I'm not raising it here. I've, I've oh, raised no, the no, general No, no, that's points. fine. But um, I, what I can say to you is that it will be uh, um, addressed this year, um, 2024-5. Uh, thank you very much. Um, obviously, uh, very much welcome many of the individual items that you've been through and uh, some of the progress that's been made. But um, one thing you didn't... I've got four questions. Um, one thing you didn't mention was Silvertown Tunnel. 
uh, which obviously of huge concern to our ward and Maisie's ward and, and, and many other wards as well. Uh, on the 28th of June 2023, uh, the council uh, passed a motion um, calling for the repurposing of some of the bores of Silvertown or Blackwall and the removal of the Angustine roundabout. And I wondered what uh, lobbying representations and discussions have taken place since then by you or the leader with Newham, Tower Hamlets and TfL um, to progress uh, that resolution of the council? Um, I think we continue to uh, support any move to repurpose the, the tunnel. Um, however, you know very well that the development consent order um, doesn't, make, doesn't compel um, the mayor to do so, but we will be making representations um, and um, we are very much um, aligned with Newham on the fact that there's very little active um, travel crossing. Um, so we're working, uh, we're having discussions with Newham and the uh, Mayor of London um, along that area because for us it's, um, it's, it's uh, an important strand of our transport strategy. So we will be having discussions very soon. I think um, we're having, uh, 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 with regards to um, a cross river cycling um, plan. And whether that's in um, Silvertown or an alternative method, um, I had a meeting with um, some partners and uh, Seb Dance, um, a round table meeting. And so we we're looking at various options, um, but that's not to preclude us making representations on the Silvertown Tunnel. Thank you. It, I mean, it's just interesting, just as a side, that the uh, community liaison group for Silvertown, uh, I think it was last week, might have been two weeks ago, um, even the TLF, TLF, TFL officers were smiling and laughing at the idea of this bus, which will be free for a year, taking bikes through the Silvertown Tunnel. Uh, or is it the Blackwall Tunnel, whichever one they're going through, but Silvertown, I think, uh, which is only obviously guaranteed for three years. Um, that's an aside. Um, my second question, um, very high level and strategic, our carbon neutral plan in November 2021, which I have here, um, and our transport strategy commit the council to aim to the target of reducing car travel by 45% by 2030 compared to 2015 and HGVs by 10% over the same period. How is this target broken down year by year and monitored and what progress have we ma uh, made to date? Well, I've looked at the figures. <laughs> I've looked at the figures and it doesn't look good. So between 2015 and 2023, it's the number of car kilometers has gone down by 2% from 927 million to 906 million and vans actually gone up by vans and HGVs have gone up by 11%. Um, <coughs> so that's going in the wrong direction and cars has hardly changed. So we are, we've got much, much more to do in the remaining uh, five and a half years. Uh, how are, are we mobilizing the whole, all resources of the council and the partners now to achieve that? Um, I think we are now working a lot better along um, within the council as a whole. Um, since we created the strategic leadership group, because we are working right across the whole council, um, we have, we, I, I would agree with you that we're nowhere near where we need to be. And, um, you know, we are trying very hard to um, get those figures um, in the right direction. Some of the programs that we're hoping to introduce should start to see some difference. Um, but we monitor that through the um, Carbon Neutral Action Plan. Um, and um, it's, it is one of the areas that we could do better. Um, I, I wouldn't, um, I would have wanted to have gone a lot further. Um, even with the extension of ULES, um, what we know is that um, the emissions have gone down, um, but we're not really um, getting the inroads into um, 
dropping car use um, and car mileage in, in, in the borough. Um, one of the other things I think that um, is interesting is that um, Transport for uh, London are introducing a, um, an additional um, vehicle um, for haulage uh, vehicles. Um, I've forgotten what you call it, but it enables those to, to prevent um, accidents. So it's this um, to, to be sighted of um, pedestrians and um, cyclists to the left because it's noticed that when people are in the cabs, they cannot see a cyclist or a, um, a, a pedestrian. But in order to get those kits, um, they need to be in by October this year. Otherwise, no haulage company will be able to operate in London. Um, and I'm already getting um, representations from some of the haulage companies saying that they are going to go bust um, if that's introduced. Um, so yeah, while safety is very important, and we do understand that business, um, the importance for businesses, but I would expect that with this new introduction, um, there might be a slight drop again in, 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 in that, but you know, it's something to wait and, and, and see. Um, thanks, Councillor. I, I might come back to uh, that point later because there are some sort of follow-on points, but mm. given our third question, given our commitment to these ambitious targets and the Mayor's Transport Plan, which has a slightly less ambitious target of 25% by 2030, but for all vehicles, will the key premise of our submission to TfL's consultation on vehicle charges for the Blackwell and Silvertown Tunnel be that overall traffic through both tunnels combined must be substantially less than the 2015 traffic just through Blackpool. It is so critical for London and particularly for us, the number of vehicle movements and vehicle kilometers traveled, making that small difference there, reducing that by 25% and making the charging policy to stack up to meet that target um, would make a real difference to us and London meeting the target. Will that be the first and premise primary point of our response as a council to the charging uh, consultation? Um, I think it will, how, whether it's the first or primary, it will form part of the um, submissions. Because as it stands, the DCO and TfL policy is that there'll be, the, the traffic through both tunnels will be no more, they say, than through Blackwall. But actually, that will go. That means we won't be able to meet our ambitions. It's, it's, yeah, uh, yeah um, Councillor Gardner. My view is that um, in the first place, if you are building a road, more cars use it. Um, so it's almost counterintuitive um, to. But I think, as a council, you know, given our own position and given our um, carbon neutral plan, etc. Um, and also the understanding of um, the, you know, the kind of pollution in that area, um, it would be important for us to, to make some strong um, submissions. Thank you very much, uh, Avril. So my final question, um, and, and sorry, thanks for bearing with me. Um, okay. So the 2024 Healthy Streets Scorecard, um, which is, is a brilliant uh, tool, which was uh, published two weeks ago, um, has Greenwich uh, falling further down the borough rankings from 18th to 20th with a score of just 3.71. And their narrative says that we, Greenwich, like other boroughs, they say, talk big and do little. Is that an accurate summary? And what steps are we taking to assure that we are in the top half again of the, uh, because we were in the top half back in 2019, uh, We've, we've fallen back quite a long way, actually, over a few years. Um, we're back in the top half of the scorecard next year. Um, the, I think, you know, I, I, I was uh, at the meeting when that, um, the scorecard was presented to um, members of tech. And, um, you know, 
Two of the um, indicators on that are low traffic neighborhoods and school streets. Um, and that's where um, we seem to have fallen short. Um, on the other hand, um, there are other areas within that scorecard where Greenwich is um, in the top four or five. So um, yes, of course, we hoped to have got further with some of our low traffic neighborhoods, um, but you know, it is what it is. Um, we are hoping to address that. Um, I can, you know, judging by, you know, given having said that um, we have 10 school streets that we're making permanent, um, and we are looking to put another 20 um, school streets. Um, I have discussions with Lucian, for example, um, which I'll be having more next week, who are ahead of us in, you know, they scored very highly on that, but, you know, they invested quite a lot in their school streets. And so I'm, I'm, I'm also trying to um, learn lessons um, of, from Lewisham, how they were able to roll out as many. So we are, we are working on that um, to pull that up. Thank you, Chair, uh, and apologies for being late. It was actually the bike storage room over the Woolwich Centre isn't working, so I had to find somewhere else to um, to store my, my bike. I just actually, uh, I think, follow up on Councillor Hartley's questions there, because I've similarly raised um, requests about interventions in some streets, and in February I was told we're currently working on a project to prioritise areas for consideration for traffic management schemes like this. It would not be appropriate to consider potential locations of this type whilst this work is ongoing. Once it's complete, we'll be keen to work with ward members to discuss options in areas identified as priorities and suggestions like this will be really helpful. So I look forward to being able to take forward some of those conversations uh, now that you've confirmed that is imminent. However, I'm still a little unclear on exactly what it is that is going to be published. You sort of initially sounded like it was going to be a list of the streets and prioritization, but then it sounded more like it's simply the criteria for prioritization. Um, I mean, I would kind of wonder why we couldn't have had the criteria itself published now anyway. And I just, can you just be really clear on what it is that will come out of that and will be available to both members and to the public. So, microphone. It's the criteria plus the immediate areas we're going to be working on. That we, can, we know is funded. Um, so that, and as that rolls out, we will then um, increase that um, list. It would only be, as I'm saying to you, these are the areas we're working on in this year that's what would be on that list. Okay, so it's basically the tier one priorities yeah. and then the criteria by which we've got to that. Yeah. And so presumably the list is a bit more flexible and tactile Absolutely. because schemes in one area may then impact on others, on other which areas, could shape yeah. the prioritization. Okay, thank you for clearing, for clearing that up. And I'm I presumably, as members, will be able to have discussions with yourselves and officers about areas outside of that and whether or not and how they may be considered for prioritization going into the next financial year then? I, I mean, I think the role of ward councillors is really key because, um, to be honest, um, before I visited um, West Hallows, I hadn't appreciated. I mean, uh, councillors had been telling me the um, challenges, but I hadn't appreciated it until I got there for some seven o'clock in the morning. Um, to um, experience myself what, what residents were going through. Um, so I think the role of ward councillors is always going to be important in feeding into that information. And as um, we increase in our, our traffic interventions, I think um, behaviour will change and create other um, pressure points. So again, that's information that we would be expecting to get some feedback from councillors. Thank you, that's uh, very helpful and maybe suggests another bit of casework I was gonna raise. I should 
wait a week or two for that to be published before before raising it. So I know my expectations and can. <laughs> um, Councillor Gardner has stolen some of the other questions I was going to ask on um, Healthy Street Scorecard, and um, <clears throat> I emailed you about that the other week and look forward to a response, but I think you've probably articulated most of it um, already. Yeah, no, that's greatly appreciated. Thank you. Um, I guess the other question that I'd like to ask is on, and this sort of builds from the Healthy Streets uh, scorecard, which is when it comes to active travel, I think we've got, and we've discussed this before at full council and privately, I think we've got a really strong top level strategy, but I still think we're not quite clearer on that one level below in terms of, you know, so when it comes to things like cycle routes, how we are seeking to prioritize, be it along main trunk roads or more on quiet ways as our means of approach. And at the minute, the slight frustration that I have is it feels a little bit more like we're kind of opportunistically jumping at where there's a bit of TFL money rather than actually reaching into our own pocket as well to uh, potentially leverage additional investment from TFL and from other partners, be it developers, as is the case with, with the Barrett project you discussed in Plumstead. Um, and I just think it, it would be really helpful if we could get a slight clearer articulation of what that delivery strategy is as opposed to just the ambition strategy. And I, I appreciate this is an iterative process and we'll be working towards that. Um, but I really think the sooner we can get that clearly articulated, the better. And it'd be great if you could give a sense of when we might be able to expect something along those lines. Work in progress. Um, when we came in in 2022, um, this was against the background of um, cer certain cycle routes being stopped um, suddenly. And um, so TFL was um, kind of felt that they'd given us funding um, and we were not seeing um, that work through. So it took a lot of conversations and um, convincing that we do mean business. Um, and the reality is that um, we, do, we do need that support and the funding. But um, I think to, we have dipped into our budget. Um, we have um, invested 3.1 million um, and we're now investing a further um, several million in active travel. Um, so part of that is um, the ensuring people can um, park their cycles safely. It's ensuring the cycleways. It's ensuring the training. Um, but for me, I would love to see us getting to the point where we have, um, we're able to map in the borough um, the main cycleways for sort of, if you like, uh, hardened cyclists and the quieter um, routes for people like myself who are not um, as confident on the fast um, roads, but there are so many opportunities in the borough for people to cycle for leisure. Um, and I think that's what we'd like to be able to try and promote and, and, and um, but that's a work in progress um, with the team that's um, working with cycling, you know, um, Kieran. Yeah, uh, and the, actually there is a, there is a map, it's not, completely up to date and I know that Kieran and others are working yeah. to update that but that is really useful and I think it'd be great if that could be brought more up to date and look different types you know if people are going out for a leisure ride they might ride quite differently to a commuter ride and yeah, the yeah. nature yeah. of protection there will be will be different and I think the the primary interest here is about supporting those who are seeking to use active travel as an alternative mm -hmm. to cars if we're going to meet the ambitious stretch targets that David, that Councillor Gardner referred to earlier, this is going to be a key plank in that. And unless we're able to do that, you know, we've, I've got about as much chance of waking up with a full head of hair tomorrow as we do of meeting our targets. Um, so thank you. I really welcome. Everything is possible. <laughs> <laughs> so Sorry, I really welcome I'm that. Visual, visualizing, yeah. <laughs> uh, so. I was, I was going to I say, you, could always, you can always effect. take a trip. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, sorry. Um, and sorry, just to, uh, <laughs> two, two, other, two other questions as well. Um, 
and apologies if you referred to this one um, in your update before I arrived. On the foot tunnel, uh, both of the foot tunnels, I know you said back in April that there was to be a working group and meeting with Tower Hamlets, Newham and TfL to discuss the long term um, future and investment in the foot tunnels. Um, be grateful if you could share any update on where work on that um, stands, accepting of course two per de periods will have made some, may have made some of that trickier um, because um, thankfully the Greenwich foot tunnel was broken yesterday, repaired and working today, but Woolwich foot tunnel still no functioning lift so anyone with a wheelchair simply cannot cannot use it and it is no longer then a reliable route for those seeking to engage in active travel. Um, in I think it was summer uh, early sorry 23 we were given an indication that by November 23 we expected the parts from Germany to have arrived to complete the repairs of Woolwich Foot Tunnel. Um, I'm not expecting you to have the figures and information on that right in front of you but I'd be really grateful for any update that we could get on where things stand there and um, any work we're doing to make sure we have a store of some of the obviously more unreliable parts um, so that when there are issues, as there will always be, we're able to um, correct them as soon as possible. Thank you, um, Callum. We have a challenge here, you know, um, and it's, it's, it's um, Greenwich has two foot tunnels um, and um, we have 50% uh, responsibility in each of these foot tunnels. Um, one is with Tower Hamlets and the other is with Newham. Um, the cabinet, for example, um, agreed uh, a financial contribution of £180,000 um, on safety improvements, uh, uh, no, on the lift repair, and £65,000 on um, safety improvements. Um, but we need um, Newham uh, to agree to cough up the, a similar amount. That would be half what is needed to put it up to speed. Um, whilst we're the authority that's responsible for doing the work, the financial responsibility lies on both uh, authorities. And um, we are making representations. We have been um, working to try and improve that. Um, in terms of antisocial behaviour, um, the CCTVs um, are run by um, our Safer Spaces team. But um, notwithstanding all of that, um, we've commissioned an independent review on safety in the Woolwich Tunnel, um, which we hope will provide some useful information um, as to um, how we can make proper improvements. Again, um, uh, the discussion I had, um, I raised with Seb Dance and he said he was going to um, organize for the three authorities, including TfL, to attend um, because of the um, pre-election period um, was put on hold. Um, so we had that on hold as well as the Rochester Way um, parking issue on hold which that has just been resolved over the last week or so. Um, so I'm hoping very soon to get this. It is a, 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 a bone of contention and it's very frustrating for me because this is something we've actually said we're ready to put money up front um, and Cabinet has agreed um, that money. But if we go ahead and start to do the work, um, and Newham say, no, we will put ourselves in a really compromised financial position at a time that we are really struggling. Thank you. That's really, uh, really helpful. Um, and just last question, just touching on CPZs. Um, I think one of the challenges is that the process for seeking CPZs can be quite an arduous one. Um, what work is there kind of ongoing to look at streamlining 
some of the rollout of CPZs where there is overwhelming demand from residents. So at full council last night, we saw, was it two petitions signed by every resident on the road requesting CPZs? Um, I know of a road in my ward where um, it's a, not that many residents on it, but every resident of the road would like to see a CPZ. Um, and when one goes about requesting that, you're directed to a very long and laborious process that requires quite a lot of work from residents themselves, as well as from, you know, rather than it all being work that we as, as ward councillors can do. Um, is, is there a way, you know, are we looking to streamline some of that to make that more effective and efficient and to be a more responsive council as well? To be honest, um, there's nothing I would um, like better than to say, anyone who wants a CPZ, tell me, let's get it in and let's be done with that. Um, and then work with the more complex areas um, around. Um, but there, there are statutory procedures to going through that. It's a, a traffic management order, um, even to, to experimental, um, and then made permanent, you know, all of that. So there is a process and that's, you know, legislated on. Um, I, 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 I wish totally agree be. and accept, but there are also, there's also bits of our own internal bureaucracy that we could perhaps streamline a little more to do some of that quicker. Um, I would be honest and say that I think we have had a lot of challenges and it, it doesn't, you know, this department, when I took the lead, one of the things, um, the first things I was um, let, um, told was that um, we are undergoing um, the reorganization of the whole department. The department, um, that reorganization is still taking place. Um, I'm sure you know we've gone through so many interims um, in the process, um, and it's a very difficult thing to get that um, momentum going when um, you've got this churn. Um, hopefully, we are at the end of that process, um, and um, adverts have gone out for um, specific um, heads of departments and so on. But effectively, um, underneath the um, ADs, all the heads of services have been interim. Um, and when you have that kind of churn, having the ambitions to move in the way you'd like to is, 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 is challenging, you know. So, trust me. I'm sure, you're, I'm sure you feel it more than, you know, as <laughs> much as, or more to than be, anyway. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, no, appreciate it, thank you. Um, yeah, Councillor Harley. Thank you, Chair. I mean, I would say uh, Councillor Lacau has stripped out so much of the CPZ process that she's had me on her case criticising her for it, for, for removing the say from people who don't want a CPZ, of which there are also many. Um, that wasn't a defence, but it was just to add to the, add to the discussion. Um, so my question is about the Silvertown Tunnel, um, uh, also coming from a different perspective from uh, my colleague uh, to my right. Um, because she, like all of us, have seen the concessions that have been published um, in the charging scheme on the consultation that Councillor Gardner asked uh, you about. Um, could I just ask for your view on the concessions for low-income households that are being proposed and also for small businesses? Um, uh, you know, half-price tolling for low-income residents, but only guaranteed for three years. Um, small businesses uh, only getting... Uh, a small discount only at some times of day and also, again, not uh, guaranteed beyond uh, a certain amount of time. It, I think they're very disappointing. I wondered what her assessment of them was as the Cabinet member. Um, I think it's about balance. Um, I understand businesses and small businesses particularly, and in Greenwich, um, a lot of our businesses are small businesses. Um, so we want them to be able to um, function and thrive. Um, but at the same time, um, we've got this conundrum of trying to reduce the number of um, vehicles uh, in, in, in uh, and mileage 
within the borough. So it's, it's, um, the discussion is really about how we get that balance. And so I don't want to, we're not there yet. Um, we're still in the process of having that discussion. Thanks. So on that subject of um, balance, I mean, I agree about small businesses that one of the benefits of the tunnel, the reason so many of us supported it, I seem to be the only person left supporting the Silvertown Tunnel, but there were a lot of us at the beginning, including most of the, people, the Labour councillors who ran the council. Um, and part of that, a big part of that, was opening up new markets for small businesses in Greenwich. Um, so on that and on the um, broader point about residents, local residents who are most in Greenwich who are, uh, and other nearby boroughs who are most impacted by the construction of the tunnel, and the negative impacts, which there will be. Um, we've previously disagreed on this point about a local exemption. You know, I think that the council should be lobbying hard for a local exemption for all Greenwich residents and small businesses. Um, previously, you've said you don't agree with that. We've kind of debated that out in full council. Could I just ask um, the question I was trying to get at last night, which is, are you... Uh, in, in any sense, open-minded on that question. Uh, you, you're working through the consultation now. Have you firmly closed off the approach of lobbying for a local exemption, or are you open-minded? I never go into anything closed-minded, um, to, be, to, to be honest. Um, I, I, I want to hear the arguments. Um, but I also have to consider that um, if we're saying we need to reduce traffic, do we, the very people that um, would be most impacted, um, are they the ones that are going to be wanting to go in and out of that tunnel um, when they're already so heavily impacted? I need to hear from them. David sits on a panel, um, chairs a panel um, in, in, in the area. So, you know, I will be having discussions with David, with um, members to kind of glean um, something from residents as well, because I think this is in too important to be left as an officer-led um, response. Thank you, final one on that topic then, thank you. Um, great to hear that you're engaging with those residents. You know, speaking as a councillor representing the south of the borough, the south of the borough hasn't been given the public transport connectivity through the tunnel that was promised by Transport for London by Sadiq Khan because of the failure to deliver the Eltham to Beckton route. So could I ask that that should be, if, good to hear that she's, if not open-minded, then at least not close-minded, I'm taking from her answer, <laughs> and there's a glimmer maybe of hope. Um, could, you, could, could you perhaps just include in your consideration of that this important factor about public transport for the south of the borough. So I think non-delivery of that public transport connectivity for residents in the south of the borough should weigh more heavily in favour of the council lobbying for a local exemption because I think it's unreasonable to expect people to, um, to put up with that uh, absence of public transport and then uh, charge them uh, fully uh, when this borough is, the mo is amongst the most impacted, of course, by the tunnel's construction and arrival on, and its inevitable uh, negative side effects. In all the consultations that we've done, um, even uh, regarding buses and um, the north-south connectivity um, has always been important for us, and we've always tried to raise that um, issue. Um, and we've also requested that the Mayor of London does, um, team does a, a, an assessment, um, an evaluation of our transport bus uh, network within the borough um, so that we can show where there are uh, areas lacking. Um, in fact, from my point of view, um, we would consider um, using a sill money to contribute, um, or Section 106 to, to, um, to contribute to um, better connectivity in any area that we could in that sense. So um, the north-south is, 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 is 
key and is a priority. Um, no, thank you. Um, I will uh, go through some my own questions then, if that's okay. Um, so one actually was on uh, the bus, bus services within the borough, which you've sort of just touched on um, there, and the sort of kind of key challenges we have within inter-borough transport. Um, so I'm interested about the, the, you've made the request from, um, I think, Sadiq Khan for the, 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 wider, the wider sort of mapping of the, of the buses. Um, how are you sort of, as it, within your sort of team, how are you sort of like strategizing in terms of what, where you, how, in, in making the case for more buses services within the borough, um, be interested to know more about that. Of, um, other than get, getting TfL, what's the sort of strategy that's driving from within the council? Um, and then, sort of following on that, in terms of kind of PTAL ratings, of um, a lot of the sort of transport strategy and regeneration with this, in this borough is very dependent on improving, bringing up the pu public transport access. Across, across the borough. And again, from a sort of more strategic point of view, how, how are you and your sort of team and officers um, approaching that and sort of, in sort of raising the PTEL ratings kind of across the borough, so which would hopefully unlock more of the transport strategy um, that you'd like to bring forward? Um, thanks very much the, um, for those questions. The important thing, I think, of um, asking the mayor to do an assessment of the bus routes and the um, the overall network in the borough is so that we can identify um, the areas and make a case for. We already know that the north-south um, connectivity is poor. Um, interestingly enough, um, we, the transport department, had a meeting um, with the um, region and planning um, department um, because we felt that um, we were not um, aggressive enough um, when um, planning applications are coming in uh, raising the uh, profile of the transport network um, and the connectivity thereof. So um, we are now trying to work better and understand how we can, um, you know, especially when you look at transport comments um, and they'll say things like, it's all about negotiation with developers, but I feel we need to be a, li a little bit more aggressive. Um, so we were aligned um, with the planning department that we could do more. Um, and so um, that's just following a meeting that um, we've had to see. So how that will pan out um, should become apparent in, um, as, as, as we move into new developments. Great, no, I think that's really welcome. Um, do you know um, when you expect that bus assessment to be delivered to you? Is that sort of within this year or next year? Do you? Sorry, um, we actually asked um, the leader um, and I requested this last year, but then there was all of this um, issue about the elections and so on and so forth. So I think we now need to be pushing to say, okay, that's all over. Now, can we have some decisions? You know, in the same way that, um, as I say, Rochester Way was on hold and we had to ask the mayor's office to, you know, when, when can we get a move on on some of these things that were already on hold? So. Um, yeah, we're hoping that we can get a decision on when the, that's going to happen. And I will certainly come back um, when I come back to this panel and keep you abreasted. If something happens before that, I'm quite happy to just drop you an email and keep you informed. That's great. Thank you very much. And um, I think it's good to, good to hear that you're sort of working with the sort of regeneration team as well, sort of in where you can sort of cross, out, cross over. Um, my sort of second kind of questions was um, a bit about the EV charging you mentioned, which is sort of um, kind of great to hear that the strides that are being made within the EV charging. And then, I suppose, um, are you look also looking at ways, sort of safe ways, that um, either residents can charge from their own properties 
or are you looking at also looking at ways that like um, in terms of sort of using existing street lighting and um, adapting street lamps for sort of charging sort of by the side streets which I think is done various places are those also being sort of considered um, within some of the uh, EV charging um, licensing agreements will include some of uh, using uh, the use of um, street lamps and so on um, but we are not at a place um, at this stage where I can say we're ready to um, enable people to be running leads across pavements. Yeah, Councillor. Thank you, Chair, very much. I'm really grateful to you for raising this, um, because we're, we're, uh, this issue about at-home charging. It was one of the eight recommendations that Overview and Scrutiny made and Cabinet accepted to add uh, exploring at-home charging to the action plan for the carbon neutral plan. Um, and uh, that where it was left was that there was going to be work to ex the council was going to do to explore the options. And I'm really glad you raised it because I've raised this quite a few times and I've encountered the attitude that, well, it wouldn't really work in Greenwich because we've got a lot of flats and uh, it's less appropriate than in boroughs that are exploring it, like uh, heavily like Bromley, for example. But um, the south of the borough, there is huge potential for at-home charging because of the nature of housing in the south of the borough, and I'm sure elsewhere as well, um, in pockets. Um, so I, I would really appreciate just an update on, on that exploration work that was agreed, um, because it, it's, it could be a really crucial component of us achieving our targets. And I don't want us to, to sort of just box Greenwich off as not fit for at-home charging, because I think it's got big potential. I wouldn't um, box Greenwich off, and I think if you remember um, at this panel um, before, I've said I'm quite open for, for officers to explore, but it has to be in a way that is not um, destroying the integrity of the pavement, um, and also has to um, be cognizant of the fact that, um, you know, once, are you a homeowner, is this, you know, what, Sometimes people sell up, they don't want it, you know, do, does that mean it's dug up again? So there are all those sorts of um, considerations. Um, it's not a closed chapter, but I'm just saying that I think we're further away. Uh, we're not um, particularly close at the moment, um, I would say, to, to, to um, coming with that response on that. We're looking at it, but I don't want to pretend that... Um, Great strides have been made in that direction. Yep, Councillor Burnham. Yeah, thank you. Because, um, <clears throat> I mean, the reality is it's already happening. Um, you know, and this is not just people who've got private driveways, of course, fine. But, you know, <clears throat> I, I, bought, I stepped over two sets of cables coming across the pavement just today on my way down to get some bits from, from the shops. Um, so I, I think we really do need to grasp the nettle on this because if we don't, if we're not able to give clear guidance and guidelines on it, it's going to be done to us anyway. And that's where I think there is a real risk that we have loose cables. That becomes a risk for people who have mobility or issues in terms of um, eyesight and so on. And <clears throat> many people who are doing it themselves are quite responsible in it. They have, you know, the sort of, almost mini little speed bump things that are quite clearly clear and visible, but not not all. And so I think that's A, where the lampposts can be really, really important, but also just being clearer about at home, because as I say, it is happening. Um, and because we've not properly engaged on it or not I enough, it, it's happening without our, without our oversight or say. Uh, again, I'll, uh, and I'm, I'm not making this into an excuse, um, given the things that we've been trying to achieve and um, the um, lack of stability within the department, you have to um, pick some of the priorities that you're dealing with. Um, there are issues. Um, I've just had um, something raised with me which seemed to be counterintuitive um, that where there are 
electric charging bays, people are also being charged for parking there whilst they're charging their cars. So that doesn't seem to me to be right um, because we're in encouraging people to, to, to use that. As long as they are charging their vehicle um, rather than um, using that as a parking, I would not expect anybody to be parking where there's an, uh, a, a, a charging point. Um, so that is something it was just raised with me today that I will need to take back to the office and uh, make sure that we kind of tighten up. Um, I have to say that um, parking enforcement is um, something I didn't raise in my um, uh, update, but it is another area that we will be um, looking to do a lot in. We've certainly increased um, by about two-thirds in the last few months the number of operatives that we have out there because um, my view is if we're increasing um, CPZs and so on and so forth, um, it's important to enforce them. Um, otherwise, residents are paying um, and people will be parking in residence um, parking spaces and not being enforced. So um, I think it's, it's a two-way thing. Great. Um, thank you. I just have two, two more. Um, one, one, the one is about Silvertown. I apologize. We should have grouped them together. Um, in terms of uh, things to so think about pollution, so I'm sort of interested in sort of what mechanisms you're sort of going to be putting in place if we think about monitoring sort of PM 2.5, PM 10 to ascertain the before levels um, for the feeder roads and then the after levels so that um, you know, we, have the, we have that information. So what are you sort of putting in place to get that before reading the tunnel opens and then the after reading? Um, okay, we've just, um, which is another statutory uh, document um, uh, passed yesterday in Cabinet, the um, Air Pollution Quality um, Action Plan. But, um, so, and I've just taken over air pollution in my brief, um, so we are, that's an area we're having discussions with. Unfortunately, as I've just taken over that brief, um, we're kind of in the holiday period, so the person who was leading on that has not been around, but it's something that um, I've raised with Jamie that we need to monitor really carefully. So I will come back to you on that. Okay, yeah, because I think I'll, so I'll maybe pick that up with you next session, because I think, obviously, the tunnel is going to open, of open next year. So, like, yeah, getting yeah, yeah. those base readings done. And we do have some base readings quotes. anyway. Um, but where those are, and actually, I would like to be able to produce that. So, I think air quality will be um, looked at at the um, overview and scrutiny, if I'm not mistaken. But I'm quite happy to bring some information back here. Okay, great. And just then just to, to, um, to follow that up, up with that, are you sort of making a kind of plan or a sort of contingency plan of if the after levels of air pollution on those feeder roads are higher than the before levels, what the cons what, what you sort of in your leadership position, what the consequences you want to then lobby for, whether it's more bu bus services or whether it's what whatever it might be, but are there, is there sort of a kind of a plan there of what, if the levels are different? Look, in my transport hat and, and um, carbon neutral uh, lead in that area, I will always be advocating for better public transport um, along that, regardless of um, what the figures are anyway. Um, but obviously, if the figures are um, in any way out from the sort of modeling, then um, yes, I would have uh, uh, to take a position. And as I say, I've just taken this, so I need to work with, I'm working with a different director. Um, this sits under Jamie Carswell, so I need to be able to bring all of those um, components together so that we're in sync as to how we're moving this forward. Okay, great, thank you. Um, final question from me is, um, 
uh, as well as sort of communication, really. So obviously, transport, your portfolio is very high profile. You, you see, also, you get loads of questions at um, full council. And I sort of like you to reflect maybe on over the last year of maybe one example where a transport decision was really well communicated or you felt kind of w went really well, well with residents and maybe a, um, a decision which you felt like it, it wasn't communicated so well or what sort of lessons we could sort of take from that. I'd be interested in your thoughts sort of. I think the, the Charlton um, CPZ would be one that I thought should have been pretty straightforward, but ended up becoming um, a bit of a, uh, I need to think about my language. Um, it, 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 it didn't work out as well as I would have liked it. And um, I think I gave the example of how, you know, you have a huge area and you suddenly, you know, overnight put notices saying, um, as of this date, nobody can park here for however many days. Um, clearly doesn't make sense. Um, and, you know, I was, I was alarmed. That was, you know, something I had to um, actually take really um, serious action and, and, and involve the chief exec um, on because it was, it just didn't make sense. Um, this was not the first CPZ we'd done, so um, I couldn't understand. And again, this is a problem when you have this kind of churn where um, people um, just do... The officer tried to um, impart the fact that it was urgent. The contractor took urgent to a different level, um, and it just became a bit of a disaster in my view. Um, I think the work on the gyratory in, um, in Plumstead has been really well. Um, it's involved the schools, they've been engaged in um, some of the design and the, 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 the um, work there. So that, for me, is uh, an example of something that's been um, very well done. Um, I think work, working in partnership with um, Newham on the DLR and um, the various developers on either side um, and the Transport for London to get the rapid bus transit um, and the communities, um, that, that, that went very well. Um, but interestingly, even though um, I would give Charlton um, an, uh, an, as an example of how we did not represent ourselves very well, um, many people in Charlton are, are saying now that they've got the CPZ, they're really happy, and um, could we extend it? So, you know, um, yeah. I try to learn from all these things, and I'm sure um, Matt is always asking me what lessons I'm learning. Um, I'm sure I'll write a book for him. You have any other questions? Councillor Harvey. Thanks uh, very much, Chair. Um, the significance of something the Cabinet member said earlier has only just sunk in. And I just wanted to ask about the, what you mentioned about the possibility of using the community infrastructure levy for public transport in conversation with TfL. I think you said, could you know, it's been discussed with TfL. So, okay, could we use Section 106 to fund public transport, North South public transport links? When you to contribute, okay, because the the first thought when you said it was you know, why should we have to when Transport for London hasn't delivered the public transport links we've been promised? But then the second thought is, to, to think out loud, if that's the only way it's gonna happen, then that's the least worst option for developer funding to be used. So could you perhaps just give us a bit more information about that? And, and also, could that be specific? Could 
the council, for example, build a business case for the X161 express bus route that uh, we've long uh, been lobbying for, my colleagues and I, to link the very south of the borough to, uh, to the Elizabeth line. Could, to take that as an example, could a specific pro proposal be built with Section 106 money attached as a contribution and taken to TfL and said, look, we will dip into Section 106 funding if you make this happen? Okay. I'll start by saying there isn't an infinite amount of uh, Section 106 that can be used in this way. So, you know, that's the first proviso. Um, there's a, a, a finite amount. Um, and my view on this was if this acts as a carrot, I mean, the, um, you know, whilst I'm saying this here, that's not my starting point with TfL. Um, my starting point is that it's their responsibility. But, you know, it's so important for us as a borough that if I need to leave, use that as a leverage or a carrot, um, then I would be doing that. And I don't want to sit here and start saying this route, that route, or the other. That wouldn't make sense for me. That was just an example. Yeah, uh, yeah. But are you envisaging that it would be a specific business case that you would course, go to? Of right, course, of okay. course. Um, Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Any other questions? Councillor Gardner? Well, I wasn't going to ask one, but just to follow on, in fact, the 335 is largely funded through uh, Section 106 from the Kibbrook Village Development um, for a time-limited period. Thames Clippers, for many years, uh, came to Woolwich, uh, and they now got a bark in Riverside, of course, and both of those were at least initially for largely developer-funded through uh, Section 106. So there are quite a few examples, and the uh, new proposed developments in... Um, in, 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 in Morden Wharf and the second phase of the, I've got the name of it, Enderby, Enderby are, are also looking at funding bus routes. So, I mean, there is um, there are plenty of examples, but I, I, I think um, the difference is that um, in, in other boroughs, many other boroughs, um, they contribute uh, other funds from uh, their moving, tra moving, uh, tra moving traffic uh, Convention. contraventions and their parking fines and so forth and CPZ collections they, they contribute quite a bit towards uh, transport schemes as well as funding their um, their um, uh, freedom passes uh, and, and we don't tend to leverage the same I know recently we've now put a couple of two or three million in but we don't tend to leverage the same amount as the other boroughs that tend to be up above us on the healthy scorecard? Um, I think we have to um, face the facts that um, we are really, um, you know, I think some of the figures were um, being um, discussed yesterday um, of the savings. I know, um, Matt, you've been on the um, overview and scrutiny panel looking at the midterm financial strategy. And um, even then, you know, one of the few areas where growth fund has been invested is in transport. Um, so I think we are late to the, row, to the show. Some councils started pretty early on, and so they're, they're a lot further down the road um, than we are. Thank you, uh, thank you Chair. Yeah, finally, final, finally, final thing for me. Um, Councillor Gardner, th yeah, thanks for, for noting about the Section 106 funding for those. I suppose this is materially different, though. That is a development comes along, Kibbrook Village, Section 106 is used for the 335 bus route as a consequence to get those, that population onto the transport network. This would be rectifying the lack of public transport that for existing uh, housing and areas that Transport for London promised and hasn't delivered in the case of Eltham to Beckton. So, I, I'm, I understand why you've said absolutely the starting position is Transport for London should just deliver the north-south public transport. So I suppose, yes, those, those were funded by Section 106. This would be materially different. But I do think, as a, in the way you've outlined, exploring it, if needed, as a carrot, as you described, even where, frankly, we, we're underserved by public transport, and it's not about a new development, it's just about the fact this borough is getting a raw deal from Transport for London. I do, I do think that is worth exploring. And, and, and I think it, 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 it also speaks to our commitment 
to try and push this um, north-south um, connectivity. Any other questions for the cabinet member? No. Thank you very much, Councillor Lacau. Thank you very much. Next. Uh, just, just not a question. I just want to say, uh, just make a suggestion, really. We're due in, in September to look at the transport work program. I'm not quite sure what that means, but I, I think there is a huge gap between um, what our ambition is, which is brilliant, and the delivery. And while there's lots of little deliveries, as, as the cabinet member has said, there's a lot of catching up to be done. And it would be useful, I think, to have an action plan or a delivery plan uh, which has been referred to when we could come to us uh, in September when we discuss the transport work program. Um, if that, so I actually break this down of when things will be delivered and how we're going to re reach the targets, both in terms of the carbon neutral plan and the reductions in traffic uh, travel, but also uh, the Healthy Streets scorecard. Just be useful for that to come to us and how it's broken down and how it will be delivered. Well, I think the updated um, carbon neutral plan has got the action plan um, with regards to tra transport um, already with within that. So, you know, if this panel would want to um, then use that as your, 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 your um, tracker, um, I'm quite happy for that. Yep, thank you, Dick. Um, any others? No, no, um, no more questions. Okay, so we'll, um, thank you very much, Councillor Lacau. So we'll move on to um, the item five, which is the work program schedule, which um, is sort of to note, but there's a few kind of things that we need to discuss about it. So the, um, the first, obviously, is the update from the cabinet member for planning, estate renewal and development, which was originally scheduled for this meeting, will now be presented at the October meeting, if that's uh, agreeable to everybody. Um, and then looking at the, yes. Did anyone have any questions about the work program? Yeah. Yeah, thanks, Chair. Um, the transport work program item that Councillor Gardner just mentioned for our September meeting, um, I wonder whether we could ask for specifically for, given it's come up tonight from both myself and Councillor O'Byrne Mulligan about that transport prioritization program prioritization, whatever we get, um, it's going to be published imminently mm. by September. It would be a good moment for us to scrutinize. And perhaps if Councillor Lacau could be there, but also Ryan uh, as the AD, I think we could have a really useful conversation about, about the way transport interventions are being prioritized, if colleagues agree. Yeah, no. Yeah, that seems sensible to me. I'm glad you specified which Ryan there as well, because there are a few. <laughs> so it's kind of up to us to outline what we sort of want within the transport work program for um, the next panel. Um, the thinking was it would be sort of a, sort of almost like what is going to be upcoming this year, but we can specify what we want within that. So we could, A, mention the, um, what was it called? The, the prioritization plan, the prioritization plan. But if there are any other things that people particularly want to add in, I was going to suggest um, that there's a bit on the transport strategy where they have their sort of supporting policies like curbside, active travel, EV charging, that they look, we have an up, update on those. It's not the general transport strategy, but like those supporting policies, which I think not all have been signed off. There's some of them are in development. Um, but is there anything else people, the other things you could put in would be sort of CPZ, LTN updates, um, work on the Al Greenwich plan, but is there anything people would particularly like to see within that item? Or do you have to take both of them? Uh, I mean, it'd be, I, I will ask Councillor Lacau about it between now and then anyway, but the foot tunnel meeting that she mentioned, the sort of the tri-borough and TFL, um, although that will hopefully be done and we'll know what's coming from that by that point. Um, Councillor Cow also did touch on, well, she mentioned the ongoing reorganisation, but also there was a bit about um, parking enforcement. I think a bit more of an update on, you know, if we've seen a increase in staff of, I think, was it a third extra staff 
um, hired recently, it'd be good to get a bit of an update on where on where that stands, particularly as I know there's been talk about the future direction of the Park Enforcement Service, so it'd be good to to have something on that as well, I think. Yeah, no, that's good. And there's also the foot, foot, the foot tunnels that we're also going to bring into um, the November, uh, the December meeting on highways assets. That's going to include, so that will include Creekside Bridge, Petman Crescent foot tunnels, and the kind of the major roads. Um, yep, just to repeat the, the same thing that I'm very keen that we see how we're going to meet that 2030 target and the Healthy Street Scorecard, and to get that broken down year by year. Um, which may be in the monitoring, but I've not seen it there, I must say. Um, they, um, the, the, the second thing I'm quite interested in is, um, is, 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 is how we're improving bus times, and how we're working with TfL, and there is a real issue about bus times. I think they're now down to an average of, 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 of nine miles an hour or something, um, and bus times are getting worse, certainly in, in our end of the borough. Um, but I suspect that's, that, that's why we need to look at more bus prioritisation measures. So we used to have a dedicated officers to buses, and we don't anymore. Um, and it's the main mode of public transport, particularly for uh, lower-income people, but I, I use them every day. Um, and I think, um, yeah, I, I think it would be useful to look at that because it's not just a TfL thing. They're largely run on RBG roads, and we're therefore... Um, we do a lot of the, we can do a lot of the bus prioritization any other things you were included yep. yeah yeah my only a, a suggested addition or just question about where it might fit in is the emissions based parking charge review which is taking place this autumn i think that review really ought to come to scrutiny that's a one year on review of implementation yeah we can have a think about whether where we where they put, put that into okay i'll have to have, to, have, to have a think about that as well um okay and then also for the september item we have um incomes from developments and we just sort of um you can, feel free to email me anything you want included as well but um the sort of idea is like obviously it's a um update on all kind of incomes that are coming from different developments um so 106, et cetera, but also some more kind of uh, deeper questions about sort of how this, the development, development money is negotiated, um, our longer term developments pegged to inflation, and sort of, sort of how we know we're getting a good deal, sort of as a kind of focus. But if there's anything else particularly you'd want to include in Sorry, that? Sorry, Matt. It's not how, obviously, we had the discussion, the approval last night for the new charging regime. Um, so how well it's being collected, absolutely. Um, but how well it's being spent as yes. well. I'm, I'm concerned that um, it's a bit of a sometimes, uh, it, it can be used a bit um, expediently rather than strategically, uh, the funds that are sort of amassed within particularly section 106, but, but still as well. So I think it would be useful to, whether, I th yeah, I think it would be our scrutiny panel to look at um, how that is actually being spent and how strategic it is. Great, great. Thank you very much. And um, if it's okay, we'll just um, clarify things we want included in the October um, meeting because they need to be they need to be um, commissioned over the summer. So uh, we have two items on the um, work program. One is the flood risk and water management, which is suggested to sort of, um, give a sort of report and um, sort of current status on the sort of future work pro program related to flood risk and water management potentially bringing in outside bodies like the Environment Agency, Thames Water, and Port PLA, if we can ask the people to come. I'm not sure how they would want to come, but ask them to come. Um, and then also on that October um, agenda is planning, and the idea was to have two reports, um, sort of smaller reports, but one it focused on the update on the local plan, and the second is to be focused on um, planning enforcement and the planning service and how those are both function as kind of like s services within the council, um, if people are sort of happy with that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, this will be on the place side as well, because we, so we, we also have the cabinet member for um, 
or regeneration, but the new, the new one, uh, obviously, yeah. But so be, that will be more tied to Councillor Rahman's um, portfolio. But we could ask, have, have it sort of tied into this. Okay. Um, everyone happy with that? Feel free yeah, to Yeah, I think that's probably quite, that's quite a meaty one. that it should be much more well defined I mean, it was quite clear when we were discussing September's meeting clear ideas clear things that needed to be discussed and put on the agenda and I just concern that that just writing planning um, you can go absolutely anywhere so, uh, uh, yeah. just as a suggestion what about planning service performance to really focus it on on performance um, of the planning team and capacity and all those issues but that might focus it in and I, I, I'm guessing we probably qu can't quite go there, but around planning enforcement, because that's an enforcement rather than a planning thing. But it just, I mean, that to me feels like a bit of a weak area. Um, if anyone's you know, tried to raise concerns about whether or not things are being built to plan, and obviously we've got Mast Key as a pretty glaring example of where, you know, some people take planning permission as, you know, advisory at best um, I don't know if we're able to if we would be able to touch on how effective we are with enforcement there as well yeah no I think we should I think we should I think um, yeah we could definitely rename it to say sort of something like because so I think really specifically like on the sort of like the, where it, the local plan the new local plan update is um, the pl that planning enforcement service and the the planning service as a general when people are submitting their like planning applications but we could rename it so it's not such a general title. Yeah. Just on uh, the planning item, Chair, um, obviously uh, you and I have both been on this group that's been looking at the local plan with uh, Councillor Smith and now presumably will be with Councillor Rahman, um, though we haven't met for a while because of all the elections. But I do think that there's a role here for um, scrutiny, maybe pre-decision scrutiny, because clearly it will have to go to uh, full council, cabinet, full council, and then there will be the examination in public and so forth with the inspector. Uh, but I think some pre-decision scrutiny might be useful. I'm not sure if this is an item which has been identified for pre-decision scrutiny. Which item? For, for the local plan. Oh. Local plan. Yeah. Um, so that might just be something to consider and throw in. But certainly we should it should be part of the major part of the report here because this will be like, rather like the last local plan which is now 2014 so 10 years old uh, this this will be a, a really critical document for the next 10 years agreed okay so it's agreed um yeah, and if you, if you have any other ideas, just sort of get them to me sort of over, the, over the weekend or next week for the October meeting. Um, I think that's almost it. Well, the only other thing is w whether members would be also interested in pre-meets being set up for this panel or whether you prefer just sort of as and when needed or if you kind of don't have any strong preferences. No, no strong preference. No. I'll be honest, a lot of the time for me uh, where there's a pre-meet, I end up having to send apologies because of work anyway so um i'd probably end up doing that for quite a few but uh, we've all got enough meetings haven't we but perhaps if there's a reason to i'd, I'd be happy to join a zoom call or something a team call yeah call totally but okay we'll keep, so keep it as like an ad hoc kind of basis if it needs needed yeah. um i will yeah i will try and meet those sort of the before where, as the items are commissioned with the cabinet member and the or the or the lead sort of officer just to make sure it's quite clear like what we're asking for and um so there's sort of no confusion when we get into like the meeting I if you'd be interested i can tell you when i when they they're they're, they're going on if you want to be if you want to be i think interested. councillor hartley put it quite well if we all have more than enough meetings <laughs> and if if we
I get, I get you in here with that. Great. Okay. Happy to close the meeting. Any other business? Yeah. Yeah. If you think